All right. Uh, obviously, uh, the problems we're working today are on uh, free-falling objects. Uh, let's see what we can uh, take a look at so we can tell about free falls. So far, so far, all the problems that I've taught you to work in class have been problems that have been moving in the x direction. Well, now we're about to be working problems that are moving in the y direction. So not too much changes here. We'll have a y initial, which I usually call zero and a y final that becomes something. In this case, my y final would be a negative if the object's moving this way. But anyway, and by the way, my y final again is usually I just call y in my problems. So what's going to happen is our kinematic equations are going to change. So instead of x equals vot plus one half at square, you're going to see me now write y equals vot plus one half at square. And the third kinematic equation, you're going to see me write v square equals vo square plus 2ay. Now, some books are going to teach you this differently. They're going to teach you to rewrite this. This is the way some textbooks will teach you to work these problems. I don't like memorizing extra equations, though, in terms of because uh, of... Uh, the way I teach, you have to memorize all your equations, so no sense learning extra equations. Some books will rewrite these equations to look like this, minus one-half g t square, and v square equals v o square minus 2gy. So that's the way some of the textbooks will teach you. I'm not going to do that way. I'm just going to change nothing but the x's to y's and all you need to remember is this. If you're working a problem that is in free fall, free fall means it's acting only under the influence of gravity. If something is falling in the x dimension or being thrown up, either one, anything moving in this dimension and only under the influence of gravity is going to have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second square. So that actually makes these problems kind of easier because we know our acceleration. Because any object that is released, it's going to accelerate in the negative direction. Now, some people get messed up. Well, what about if it's thrown in the air? Or, excuse me, some people will say, well, yeah, it's negative while you're going up because it's slowing down, but shouldn't it be positive on something falling? No. Gravity is negative 9.8. This is a vector. When something is in the air, weight, mg, is acting in this dimension, which means the acceleration is going to be of a negative value for this reason. It's in a negative, negative y direction. So yes, if something is thrown up, this does slow it down. But at the same time, it speeds it up going down because you're going to end up with a negative velocity on the way back down. So that's important to keep in mind here. Your velocities would be negative in this problem as you fall towards the ground. All right, let's just go straight into working the problems. Again, the big thing is now we actually know this acceleration is negative 9.8. First problem we're going to take a look at from our book is a golf ball release from rest at the top of a very tall building. Neglecting air resistance, calculate the position and the velocity of the ball after one, two, and three seconds. So we don't know how tall this building is in this example A. Or excuse me, we're on example F now. Ha <laughs> ha. All we know is we've got a tall building. There, is that tall enough? And a ball is being released from the top of it. So there's that ball falling towards the ground. Uh, I will say that y initial is my zero point there at the top of the building. So it wants to know what is its y and what is its velocity at one second. Well, we know the acceleration for a falling object is going to be negative 9.8 
meters per second squared. We've got a time of one second. We also know one more thing. VO is zero since it was released from rest at the top of the building. So now if you look, we've got one, two, three numbers. Just like I told you on the problems that work like this, as long as we have three numbers, we can work the problem. So if we want to find y, let's go straight for the uh, second equation. y equals VOT plus one-half AT squared. VO is zero, so this just becomes y equals one-half negative 9.8 times 1 square. Well, half of negative 9.8 is negative 4.9 times 1 square is negative 4.9 meters. So that is our y position at 1 second. If we would like to find our velocity at 1 second, the first equation is V equals VO plus AT. Once again, VO is zero. So velocity would be equal to negative 9.8 times one, which would be negative 9.8 meters per second. So after one second, it has a downward velocity of negative 9.8. And again, this negative is important because that means it is moving downward. So your velocity is negative 9.8 after one second. Now, if you want to finish this problem, it also asks you to find these same values at two and three seconds. All you would be doing is changing the one to a two, the one to a two, that's it. Plug in a value of two and get your answer for each one. Uh, let's see what those answers would be, just for curiosity in case you decide to do them. We'd have a half times negative 9.8 times 2 square, so it'd be negative 19.6 meters up here. And then down here, negative 9.8 times 2 is 19.6 meters per second. And then after 3 seconds, change that to a 3 second fall, and it would fall in negative 44.1 meters at this point. If you notice this distance, this displacement's increasing rapidly as it falls. That's because of this acceleration. Your velocity, on the other hand, 19 would be 9.8 times 3 would be negative 29.4 would be your answer. Notice this should be a negative 29.4 because it's still falling down. Let's work the next example. And let's see, maybe it'll be just a little bit harder. See this nice, good blank sheet of paper? All right. We've got a stone thrown from the top of a building with an initial velocity of 20 straight up. The building is 50 meters high. The stone just misses the edge on the way down. Find the time needed for the stone to reach its maximum height. The maximum height, the time needed for the stone to return to the level of the thrower. The velocity of the stone at this instant and the velocity and position of stone at five seconds. All right, this problem is going to obviously be keeping us kind of busy. Let's draw us a nice building here. So there's our building. And somebody throws a stone upwards with a speed VO of 20 meters per second. Now this stone goes up into the air gets to some crest, and then the stone falls back down towards the ground. All right. The only other thing that told us, it told us that this building is 50 meters. Now, in this case, I like to call the top my Y initial. I call it zero. The bottom is my Y final. I like to call it negative 50 meters because that's where the bottom is. All right, let's look at the things it asks. So part A asks us to find how long it took the stone to get to the top. So all I want to do, I don't want to look at this entire thing. 
So for part A, all I want to look at is this. I want to look from here to here in part A. So this is it, from here to here. What do we know? We know that VO is equal to 20. And as we go up, what's going to be the velocity at the top? Think about it. You throw something there, it gets slower, 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 and at the very top, your velocity would be zero. It would completely stop at the top. We know the acceleration is equal to negative 9.8. Uh-oh. Look at what we know. One, two, three numbers. And just as I've told you before, whenever we know three numbers, we can find anything else that we want. So it asks to know how many seconds did it take to get to the top. That's easy enough. Now, most of the time, when I ask you to find time, I want you to think about the second equation. And this is most of the time. Most of the time. Now, it's kind of funny, but for this equation, we're not going to need the second equation to find time. Look at what we have. V, O, A, and V. First equation, look at this. V final is zero. V, O is 20 plus negative 9.8 times t would be negative 20 equals negative 9.8t. Your negatives cancel. 20 divided by 9.8, 2.04 seconds. So there's our time to the top. Now, it also asks you now to find the height to the very top. Well, I'm going to give you a little hint. Whenever you, I say how high, I want you to say third. Most of the time, any problem that asks you for maximum height, the third equation will be your quickest answer. Because all we have to do is V squared equals VO squared plus 2AX. Ooh, excuse me, 2 a Y, I forget we're in the Y dimension right now. And so look at what we know. V squared, velocity at the top is zero, so this is zero squared equals 20 squared plus two times negative 9.8 times Y. So we end up with negative 400 equals negative 19.6 times Y. 400 divided by 19.6, 20.4. So our object goes up to a maximum height of 20.4 meters. So we have answered our part A. We have answered part B. So now let's see if we can answer part C in this example. Part C wants to know how much time it takes for it to go up and return to the thrower. Now, in a second, I'm going to show you how, knowing that what we already know, how easy that is. But let's try and figure this out. So what I want to do next is look at just this. From here, up, and back to here. So let's kind of take a look at this more closely. So starting here, VO of 20 going up, 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 stop, and fall back down to here. And again, here's the roof of that building. We don't care about the top. We're looking at here to here. Y'all, what's the biggest thing you should know about from here to here? Y initial is zero point. When we do these Y initials and finals, when I call this zero, I'm referring to this as a gigantic XY coordinate system. Y is zero, which means anything up here is going to be a positive Y value. Anything down here is a negative Y value. Well, what's my Y final? Y final in this problem is also 
zero. Your displacement in this problem is zero. You're back where you started from in this problem. Y is zero, VO is 20, and A is still negative 9.8. You have one, two, three numbers. That means you can find anything else. Now, I told you a little while ago, most of the time when I ask you for time, I want you to think about the most of the time, four time, second equation. So let's go straight to it since it is most of the time, the time. Y equals VOT plus one half a t square. Plug in your numbers. This is 0 equals V O, which is 20, t plus 1 half negative 9.8 t square. So this is 0 equals 20 t minus 4.9 t square. This t cancels your square. And you're left with negative 20 divided by negative 4.9 equals t. So our answer is going to be right at 4. So 20 divided by 4.9, 4.08 seconds. Now I want you to take a look at something. This was part C. Part A we found it took 2 seconds to go to the top. Does it make sense that if it took two seconds to go to the top, it only takes two seconds to return back to the bottom? Matter of fact, one other thing we could do is this. If you plug four into, let's just do it. It didn't ask for this, but look at this. V equals VO plus AT. What would your velocity be at four seconds? 20 plus negative 9.8 times 4.08 seconds comes out to negative 20 meters per second. If you launched it up at 20, that means at this spot it is also going to be going negative 20 meters per second. Same magnitude but in the opposite direction. All right, and lo and behold, I didn't read. That was actually part B. Wanted to know what the velocity was at the point that it returns to the thrower. If you throw an object up at 20, when it returns to the thrower, it'll be traveling negative 20. All right, this problem had one more thing. It asked us to find the position and velocity of the stone at five seconds. So let's see if we can't calculate the position and velocity at five seconds. All right, so I'm gonna draw me one more time this nice building. Here comes the stone. It's thrown up. VO of 20. It goes up and it stops and falls back down and it said find position at time of five seconds. Well we know it took four seconds to return to here so obviously it's already past the top of the roof by five seconds. Uh, what else do we know? We know that A is equal to negative 9.8. Once again, look at what we know. We have one, two, three numbers. And any time that we have three numbers, we should be able to find anything else. So this problem asks you to find the velocity and the position. Once again, I'm going to call this Y initial zero. So our Y should be a negative value since we've fallen below the roof of the building. And let's just see if we can go ahead and find Y. Y is equal to VOT plus one half AT squared. So this is 20 times five plus one half negative 9.8 times t, which is 5 squared. So we've got 20 times 5, which is 100, plus half of negative 9.8, which is four, negative 4.9, times 25 is negative 18.75 
meters. All right. So there is your Y position at five seconds. The other thing it asked you to find was the velocity right now. Now let's go ahead. What should be the direction of that velocity? It better be a negative velocity for an answer. Now we could use either the first or the third equation to find this velocity. So we could use that one or the V squared equals VO squared plus 2AY equation. I will give you one problem though with this equation. If you use this equation to find velocity because of the squares, your answer will come out to a positive even though when in reality it should be a negative answer. So just be aware that if you solve this equation for velocity, your answer will always come out with a positive value, even if it's supposed to have a negative. I'm going to use the first equation. V equals 20 plus negative 9.8 times 5. So basically going to be right at 30, negative 30. So 20 plus 20 plus negative 9.8 times 5 is negative 29 meters per second. Now, one thing this problem didn't ask you to do was find time all the way to the bottom. Could you find that time all the way to the bottom? Well, let's see. It was thrown up at 20. So we've got VO of 20. It goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, slows down, slows down, stops, and here it falls all the way back to the ground. What do we know about this problem? Well, the building was 50 meters tall. So my Y initial, I called it zero up here, which made my Y final negative 50. My goodness, look at what we know. One, two, three. That means if I ask you to find time, you should be able to find it. Now, what equation did I say to go to most of the time for your time? Most of the time, if you want time, use the second equation. So let's just see what would happen if we broke it out. Y equals VOT plus one-half AT squared. Y is negative 50, so we've got negative 50 equals 20T plus one-half negative 9.8 times T squared. If you can't tell it yet, we've got a quadratic in this one. This is going to be 0 equals 50 plus 20t minus 4.9t squared. Quadratic. A, B, C. I'm going to put my calculator in quadratic mode. Mode, mode, mode. 1, 2 degrees. A is negative 4.9. B is 20. And C is 50. My answers are negative 1.7 and 5.8. Well, we can't have negative 1.7 for an answer, but we can have 5.8 seconds for an answer. So that would be my time all the way up and all the way back down. Y'all, working these problems are not hard. It's no different than problems you've done already. The biggest thing is this, when you're working on these problems, if it's thrown up into the air, what do we know is true? If it's thrown up into the air, we will have a VO, but V would be zero. Of course, you already know your A is negative 9.8. So if we have height or if we have, for example, some type of velocity initial, we'll be able to try and find the answer in there. The biggest thing, even if you're on top of a building, throwing something up, let it fall back down. 
look for three numbers. You're still going to have a VO of V time. A is already negative 9.8, and you're going to have Y. So look for some of this information, and there's going to be your answer in that problem, finding these things. The big thing, again, is with your Y value. Make sure you call your zero point, and then that way if you end up below, you call that negative Y. Above should be a positive Y. Other than that, you can't mess these up. So, hola, como esta bien, señor? Kind of like when they do that little wavy thing, although I don't think it goes over that word. I don't care, because you know why? I teach physics. And physics equals fun. I'll go now.